As if this room wasn't uncomfortable enough already, when I took out my things to get ready for bed, I realised I'd forgotten to pack any pyjamas. Anna insisted on lending me a nightdress. I didn't know nightdresses still existed. I thought they'd died with the Victorians. It was made of white cotton and came down to my ankles, with buttons at the front and a high frilly collar. It felt really weird to wear. And it smelled weird too. A strange old-fashioned smell. A high metallic strike made me jump, but it was only the living room clock. It struck twelve and the last stroke faded away. And as it faded away, the wind stopped whistling in the chimney. The water stopped gurgling in the pipes. The breeze stopped rustling in the trees. I had never known such silence. It was as though the world was holding its breath. I realised I was holding my breath too. I forced myself to breathe. The howling in the chimney started again. A terrible, desolate, lonely, wailing sound. I covered my ears with my hands. Tap, tap, tap. I screamed. Something was rapping on the window. I burrowed down into the bed and pulled the duvet over my head, whimpering with terror. The wailing grew louder. Skeletal fingers knocked on the glass. Tap, tap, tap. My teeth were chattering and I shivered uncontrollably. I thought I might die of fright. I wanted to run, but I couldn't move. Tap, tap, tap. I made myself breathe. It was just a tree branch tapping against the window, I, th I told myself. There must be a tree outside the window. I couldn't just lie there whimpering all night. I had to be brave. I had to go and see. I forced myself to get out of bed and walk across the pitch black room. I held my breath and pulled the curtains open. A girl in a white nightdress was staring in at me, a girl with long dark hair and a desperate look in her eyes. I shrieked and jumped back, my blood pumping, heart racing. Then I realised it was my reflection. It was just the nightdress that had scared me. I wasn't used to seeing myself in a nightdress. I forced myself to look again. My reflection looked back at me, except it didn't look exactly like me, and it didn't look like a reflection. Don't be stupid, I told myself. Of course it's your reflection. From somewhere outside the house came a whirring noise, and then another clock started to strike with a deep, resonant sound that lingered in the air. That was strange. I had heard the living room clock strike every hour this evening, but I was sure I hadn't heard that other clock before. The clock continued to strike and my reflection raised its hand. What? I hadn't raised my hand, had I? Then the hand, no, it couldn't have done. I was stone cold, goose pimples prickled all over my body. I must be going mad, I told myself. I must be hallucinating. Because I was sure the hand had beckoned to me. Had I just beckoned without knowing it? Was that possible? Ice cold with dread, I raised my arm. The girl in the window didn't raise hers. She just stared at me with a pleading look in her eyes. As I lowered my arm, flooded with terror, she reached hers towards me and beckoned again. Help me, she mouthed. I screamed, yanked the curtains back together and ran from the room. There was no way I was going back in there. No way I was staying in this flat. I would wake Anna and make her take me back to London, back to my own home, right now, this minute. As I ran through the doorway, I had the weirdest sensation. For a moment, I felt as though I ceased to exist. It was as though my body had dissolved into thin air. Then, as the door slammed shut behind me, the sensation faded and I felt solid and whole again. It must have been some sort of fainting fit, I thought, only without the toppling over part. But something was different. My clothes felt different. I looked down. What the... Instead of Anna's nightdress, I was wearing a long brown apron over a long grey dress and black boots. There was a tightness around my ribcage as though I had some sort of corset underneath the dress. What on earth was going on? Was it a dream? But I hadn't fallen asleep, had I? I needed to wake Anna. I had my hand on her bedroom door handle when suddenly I stopped and stared. All the doors in her flat were modern and white with cheap looking handles in a dull coloured metal. But this was a door of polished wood. 
elaborately carved and panelled. And instead of a cheap chrome handle, my hand was clutched around a sphere of shining brass. Still clutching the doorknob, I looked up and down the corridor. Everything was different. <laughs>